Indian Springs opened in 1952, and it actually took a couple of years for the programs to develop. Mac Fleming was one of the most highly respected members of the faculty uh, for his scholarship, for his teaching ability, for his embodiment of the school's byword of respecting the worth and dignity of the individual. I was born and raised in Lawrence, South Carolina, and I attended the public schools in Lawrence, and then after I finished there, I went into uh, college at Presbyterian College, and I did two years, and then Uncle Sam came calling. <laughs> so for three years, I was in the Navy. Then I went back to Presbyterian College, where I graduated, and uh, then I went to Peabody College. My first teaching job was as a graduate assistant at Peabody. Then I took a job at what was, which was then Troy State Teachers College. Now, of course, it's Troy, Troy University. And then my major professor at Peabody, Dr. Allen, gave me a call and said, Dr. Armstrong wants to talk to you. And I knew about Armstrong because I'd had classes with him. I knew he was starting a new school. This wasn't college teaching, but it was teaching on a level with, uh, I had assumed, and it turned out to be true, probably very superior high school students. He said, well, Fleming, uh, we'd like for you to come to Indian Springs. The school wouldn't have existed if it hadn't been for Harvard G. Woodward. He noticed that the schools in the state were lagging behind. He decided that he was going to leave for most of his money to this new school. Of course, he got the outline of what kind of school would I want? What really would fit rural youth of Alabama? It's an academic institution. We get good students uh, who are willing to work. I'm a member of the class of 1975, so Mac Fleming was my U.S. history teacher and uh, what a great experience that was. When you went into his classroom, he could take a set of facts and circumstances and weave a tapestry with it that was just a beautiful story. He would bring history to life. Uh, I, I can hear him now uh, telling stories where he'd be saying, also, uh, yavo. Well, he had a very strong reputation with the students, and he was particularly well known for uh, manufacturing devilishly difficult multiple choice questions. There are always two answers, you know, you had to really know your stuff. But that's how he challenged us. He wanted us to really dig in and get to the nuances of every matter that we dealt with. Uh, I think we've got a curriculum that is very stimulating. I think that the kids get attracted to it, attached to it, and uh, feel like that this is the place they need to be. Mr. Fleming was, uh, was the interim head one year, uh, right after Dr. Jackson left, and it was kind of an amazing year. Dr. Jackson left abruptly, and we were left with no director whatsoever. So we looked around and the only person we thought qualified to do it was Mac Fleming. I didn't want to be a director. And I was getting ready to turn him down until he added this statement, says, Mac, if you don't take it, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> well, I didn't have any choice. I had to take it for one year. And Mac was able to keep all our faculty intact. Because he's Mr. Fleming, everyone just pulled together and it was probably the most relaxed, calm year. Everyone knew that he was going to do the right thing. He made it seamless and I don't actually recall having any kind of sense of trauma or confusion around anything that was going on um, because it was just Mr. Fleming, um, which seemed appropriate and right um, and all of the students were put at ease immediately. They said, well, Mac, why don't you just keep the job? But I knew I did not want to be a permanent director. I wanted to go back to teaching. That's where I belonged. I just felt like 
That was best for me. Of course, he was a superb lecturer, you know, just as a model of good teaching. He actually became a kind of mentor to me. Uh, you know, when I think of my own career, uh, Mac was a model and a mentor. Everybody is happy to see Mr. Fleming when they see, because he's happy to see them. And he's the most uh, consistently positive and upbeat person I've ever known. He's always such a nice and a loving person whenever I see him. Um, whenever I see him walk by, he always either smiles at me or he waves at me. The students love him. Every day when we leave lunch, he has to have his Coca-Cola. You can see him after every lunch going to the student store and buying a Coke and uh, then heading back to the library to the archives. He's very playful, yet he's very, very knowledgeable. Mr. Fleming is a, is a great kind of anchor to the school because he's been there through so many generations. And often school cultures can change a lot. And he, he kind of remains like a place where you can find um, where that school culture has been the same. He knows when it's changed. I've asked him millions of questions. How did the hut get here? What's Pop Out Fair? What's the Truth House? And to be able to get that from someone who was here and involved in that, it's just been amazing. If you think about it, he's the living archive of the school. He's been here since the beginning. You know, Mr. Fleming is sort of the heart of Indian Springs. Um, he is sort of Indian Springs incarnate, both sort of the memories and knowledge in his mind and just his character and being and what he believes in. But I will say, I will never ever be able to call him Mac. He will always be Mr. Fleming. Um, I've tried a couple times and it just felt weird and wrong coming out of my mouth. So um, he sits next to me in the office, comes in every day um, and works on the archives and now they're digitizing everything. Um, and he is in his element. He's somebody we can share ideas with and He's always reading. I mean, at this point in his life, when I go into the archives, he'll be reading a book and he says, look what I have just discovered. And I think that just excitement about intellectual things is something that, at this point, it's just wonderful to be able to share. It's hard to realize what it's like to be in on the beginning of a school. I think the fact the school is still here and it's doing a good job, it's flourishing, indicates that uh, we're meeting our primary objectives. We're keeping the quality high, uh, we're involving the students in the operation. The quality of the school right down the board, I think, has stayed remarkably good. In all of all the ups and downs, and well, there have been plenty of ups and downs, but on the whole, we've been, been able to maintain uh, the quality that we wanted to see from day one. And I think the success of the school indicates, well, look at the quality of the, we have at the present time.